On today's Super Tuesday, we're going to make a giant magnifying glass, an enormous lens to melt things, which can reach nearly 1,290 degrees. Just to mix things up a bit, this is one of those experiments that's cool to watch in a video, but not to try at home. Though, as you'll see, the material we're going to use is not exactly easy to find. You've probably played with a magnifying glass like this to burn something in the sun before. We even lit a campfire on Manuel Do Mundo using a magnifying glass. When I was a kid, I used to play by killing ants with a magnifying glass. Do not try this at home. Let's quickly understand how this thing works. Imagine the sun's rays are coming from here to there. They arrive more or less parallel, side by side, perfectly straight. After they pass through the lens, the lens bends these light rays. So look how cool that is. The light ray comes in straight and the lens bends it. But look at this, depending on how I move it, you can see that the bending changes. So, if you have a bunch of parallel rays hitting the lens, they all end up converging at a single point. That's why this is a converging lens, because it makes the rays of light converge. Uh, if I put my hand here, you can see the light stays concentrated in one single spot. That's the focal point. That's where this magnifying glass is going to burn something, because it's concentrating all the light there. And the cool thing is that this also works the other way around. I'm going to place a flashlight exactly at the focal point where the light was converging. Look how crazy this is. Now the light comes from here, spreading outward. The moment it reaches the lens, it stops spreading and continues in a straight line. It forms a sort of light cannon. I'm going to add a bit more smoke so you can see it better. Obviously, light cannons are really cool to look at, but they also have a very useful practical function. They're used in those lighthouses by the sea to guide ships. So back in the early 19th century, lighthouses already existed, but they had a major problem. They couldn't project a proper beam of light. Here's why, in a lighthouse, they needed a massive lens to create that beam, but a huge glass lens was impossible to make because it would be extremely heavy, requiring a crane which didn't exist at the time. No one could lift it, and it would be ridiculously expensive. On top of that, if there was too much glass, the light would have trouble passing through it, so the glass itself would reduce the effect of the light. The person who solved this problem was a Frenchman named Augustin Jean Fresnel. He figured out a way to remove part of the lens, reducing the amount of glass and making it much lighter. Look at the idea he came up with. Imagine this is the lens Augustin Jean Fresnel wanted to place in his lighthouse. Obviously, something like this in glass would weigh about 660 pounds, and in a lighthouse, it would be even bigger. So he decided to cut the lens like this. First, he divided it into several sections. Since I'm making a simulation here, this isn't exactly how Fresnel did it, but let's assume it was. Then he decided to remove certain parts. The guy simply discarded all of this. Everything I'm marking here, he got rid of and then cut the glass like this, uh, just this little piece. Look how crazy this is. It looks like a saw blade, but it's not. This is a lens that works identically to the way it worked before being cut. But now it's much lighter. See, it doesn't have all this amount of glass here, and it becomes much easier to produce and then to put it up there in the lighthouse for the ships to see. In fact, once Fresnel placed this lens in the lighthouse, it became visible from 20 miles away. A ship that was 20 miles away from the lighthouse could see the lighthouse. That was impossible before because the light would scatter. Now, the light travels straight without dispersing. This type of lens is still widely used today, whether in traffic lights, airport approach lights, or any kind of light cannon. It's used in theater lighting, movie lighting, and even nightclub lights, those ones that point upwards. It's also found in front of those massive television screens, just like the one I disassembled with Luciano Amaral. By the way? In fact, yes, we've kept this huge contraption ever since we took apart that television for this experiment. I'm going to start by extracting the lens from this pile of junk that was just sitting there as protection. Here's the little guy. It smells like pee, this weird thing. Now you've realized that we have a problem here, haven't you? The lens is soft, it's completely flexible, so there's no way a person can hold this lens in the correct position while adjusting it in relation to the incoming solar rays. We need a damn good support to hold it. To start, I'm going to build a kind of frame similar to the one the television already had but much sturdier. 
similar to a picture frame itself. To attach the lens on top of this rectangle, I'm going to drill some holes in the plastic and put in a screw with a washer. Now yes, the thing is clean, it's robust, and I need to make a side support for this thing to stand by itself. We ran some tests here and found that the ideal height is around 5 feet and 11 inches. I'm going to cut the legs to be 3 feet and 3 inches tall and then we'll adjust based on the object that's going to be burned. I've got this super saw right here. I'll take the opportunity to make a slightly more refined base to practice some woodworking skills here on Manual Do Mundo. Oh, here's an optical instrument that could make our little friend Augustin Jean Fresnel jealous, huh? Running a test, we see that the lens's focal point is about 2 feet and 10 inches away from it. Stop, 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 stop. Hold on, before we put things in the sun, let's do a really cool experiment that I've always wanted to try. Let's see if this Fresnel lens actually works properly, if it really makes the light rays converge to the same point. So let's set up parallel light and see the little funnel forming up ahead. <laughs> Imagine that this here is the sun's ray. All the rays arrive parallel, and on the other side, they all have to go to the same point. They have to cross at the focal point. I'm not seeing it from the other side. Now it should be pointing downward. Now it should be almost straight. And now it's facing upward, right? Is that what you're seeing there? If that's the case, then we have a Fresnel lens. Since we don't have a collection of lasers here, we're going to take a long exposure photograph. It will capture the light over a long period. Then you'll be able to see the light converging perfectly. We'll find this focal point precisely. Look at this. On the left side, that would be the sun entering the lens. And on the right side, you can see that it concentrates into a single point. It converges at the focal point, And that's where it's going to get really hot. I think just for these light simulations with the laser, this already deserves a like. Huh? Look at that. Well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. The weather forecast says it will be sunny with absolutely no clouds. It's the perfect day to test this out. Positioning this thing is actually really easy because I put a lot of effort into the woodworking, so everything is perfectly aligned. The first step is to align this part with the sun. Uh, I make this shadow line up right on top of this here. That way, I know it's aligned in that direction. The key is right here. This part is in the sun. I start turning, 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 turning until at some point the shadow reaches. So at that point, at this threshold between sun and shadow, I know it's exactly aligned. Here, it's exactly in the same direction as the sun. And here, it's at 90 degrees relative to the sun's rays. And the final test is to find the focal point. It's about understanding where light rays converge, as you just observed. At this point, there's no other way. You have to take a piece of wood and hunt for the focus point. You will see that it is quite easy to find. And I'm wearing these goggles here. They're welding goggles. They're made so you can look at the insanely bright light that's about to appear here. Let's see, pay close attention. The focus point is lower, so I'm going down since it's currently out of focus. Bam, I found the focus point. I'll record up close so you can see. Check out how long it takes for this wood to catch fire. Let's start with the most useful thing. What we could do with this lens is pop some popcorn. Just sitting in the sun here in the frying pan, it's already warm. The margarine is starting to melt on top of it, but you can see it's not hot. Otherwise, the margarine would evaporate. Mixing the popcorn well, I think it's worth adding a bit more to increase the chances of success. It's a popcorn that we have here. A popcorn popped, but we realized that the corn was burning. So I moved the corn away from the focus position to heat the frying pan first, and then we pop the popcorn. Now you know that next time you go to the movies, just grab a Fresnel lens, leave it in the sun beforehand, and you'll have free popcorn, or almost. The next step is a classic of Brazilian cuisine, fried egg sandwich. Let's first give the bread a little toast, a little bit of oil. Oh boy. Fried egg sandwich made with a Fresnel lens. A rare experience in your life. It's perfect. You know that if I try to measure the temperature with my infrared thermometer or with an infrared camera, it won't work. These thermometers go up to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think this thing goes way beyond that. We made a little chart with things we're going to try to melt here. 
So it starts with sulfur at 239 degrees Fahrenheit and goes up to glass, which melts at 2282 degrees. Place your bets below, okay? What do you think will melt? How far will our super lens go? I'm going to start by testing a piece of cork just to make sure the focus is right. We painted everything black so it absorbs a lot more light and heats up more easily, otherwise it starts reflecting the sunlight and doesn't work properly. So we always leave a small unpainted strip to know what material it is. Let's see if the cork catches fire easily, and if the focus is correct. This is the cork. I think our setup is quite good. This white brick you see underneath, this piece here, is a refractory brick. This is used inside barbecues and fireplaces. The advantage is that it doesn't crack. You can expose it to a very high temperature and it won't break. We've already tried several things under here. Tiles, all kinds of stuff, and everything cracks. Smells like burnt cork, like a festival bonfire. Sulfur melts at 239 degrees. We placed it here in a small black bottomed can. Let's see what happens. See it? Dude, it not only melted, but it started to burn, and the smell of this thing is awful. Okay, let's move on to the lead tin alloy. This alloy is used in soldering, in electronic soldering. Its melting point is 361 degrees. So if it melts, that means the lens reached 361 degrees. It melted in like a second. Bismuth. I almost feel bad melting this one. 520 degrees Fahrenheit for it to turn into a liquid. This stuff is so pretty when it crystallizes. But here we go, in the name of science. That's bismuth. Bismuth turned into a puddle of molten metal. Lead, 620 degrees. Look at what's left of it here. This here is a piece of an aluminum soda can. Aluminum, 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit. That smoke is probably from the paint. It's not that the aluminum is melting yet. It burned a hole right through the aluminum sheet. It punctured the aluminum really easily. And the problem is that we don't have anything close to aluminum to test next. We have to jump straight to copper, which melts at 1,985 degrees. Not even close to melting. Let's try with glass, which is over 2,282 degrees, just to be sure. And since this is a much bigger challenge now, we protected it from the wind a bit and placed a black painted brick underneath the spot where it will burn, so it absorbs much more heat. Let's go. The glass appears to be melting. It's funny how it casts a shadow around the lens, so I'll remove a brick to keep the bulb's top in focus. The entire lamp doesn't seem like it's going to work. Let's try breaking the glass to get it exactly in focus. The lamp isn't melting at all. I did some research and found that lamp glass might be much more resistant because it needs to withstand very high temperatures. It could be borosilicate glass, for example, which takes much longer to melt and is much more resistant. So let's try with a cheaper glass, like a beer bottle, and see what happens. It takes time to distribute the heat, but it should have cracked already, right? Melting, at least we know it shatters the bottle pretty well. Let's adjust the glasses up here again. Oh no, 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 it's not burning, it doesn't fit. Well guys, I think we found the limit of our Fresnel lens here. It spent 20 minutes roasting in the sun, and there was no sign of melting, and now the weather's turned cloudy. The sun's gone. And we've discovered that the maximum temperature of this thing today is around 1,292 degrees Fahrenheit. At least now, every time you fry an egg, make popcorn, or look at a lighthouse by the sea, you'll remember this, right? Don't forget to subscribe to Manual Do Mundo if you're not subscribed yet.
and give a like to this Super Tuesday. It was really fun, right?